And here we go! We find ourselves in the trios game over dance. Looking at this team of three, we just lost one. One just dies, goes down to NLW. They're right outside of Rivertown, northeast by southeast by southeast by northwest. Shout out to Bluff for that one. Oh my, Ty just gets sniped in the face. Dobby's the last one left. He's going to try. He's at the warehouse right behind this area. Let's see if we get the switch off to him. Team just getting pushed incredibly hard right now. 117 people left first circle, 23 seconds away from beginning to close. So can we get the rotation called the spectate mode? There we go. Dobby inside now. Has the Farah and the here Has one kill racked up. Ty has gone completely. He's already goosed. She's dead. Opposite partner in. We'll call him 27. In the goosh right now. He's going to go down. A couple shots coming. He's on the backside of the tank. He's gone. Down to the last teammate. Dobby back inside a warehouse. Spanking nukes was the one to take out 27. Holy hell, those rotators are spectating both taking a while. Look out right out front, the knock comes in. Dobby picks up one. NC Kaya goes down, shotguns out. One HP for Dobby in the front, in the back. Look out. Gone. Goes down there. That'll be the team completely wiped. See you later. NLW, NC Kaya, and Patrick over panic. The team we're looking at, NCK, NC Kaya in the Gouge. Let's see if we get a look at that. Here comes the fight incoming. Three kills racked up for Kaya. Or Kai, excuse me. Go with Kai. Alongside me today, as we just jump right in the action, haven't even got to introduce everybody. DJ, 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 GG. Oh, I like that one. Do it, do it, guys. Can I do it? Yeah, Greg, fire away. Hold on, Greg, before you do it. All right, yeah, I'll wait. Let's see what, let's see what Kai's got. North Carolina Kai. That could be it, Greg. We're not sure. <laughs> Seven text comes out. He knows where the opponent is. Oh, but he leaped. He just, just etched out just a little bit too inch too far on the left side. Took a lot of shots. It's down to about 10% health. Wheels around trying to fire some shots in return. Wait a second. South Park's coming back up. He's taking advantage. He'll pick it off. Kai sticks with it in the gouge. Fourth kill. He's, he just inched out a little too far on the left side of that tank. Took too many shots. You, you, you go back to... If you want to go in depth here of the camera angles, he's peeking from the left side and uh, opponent was peeking from the right. He's actually going to see more of Kai's body than Kai's going to see in him. And you can see it right there as he almost lost because of that. But stands tall, stands strong, fights well. Movement was nice, stays up. Kai with four kills. I believe he's leading the team. Let's take a look around. Yeah, Patrick over Panic has four as well. Hold on a second. Kai just went down. And Kai is gone. Thundercrotch goes, it takes out NC Kai. What the hell? That came out of nowhere. That's over by that warehouse where they just fought the other threesome that they took out of the game completely. Kai now completely gone. They do have 4K to buy him back and a buy station, but somebody is on that buy. Sniper rifle coming out. Patrick over panic with an LC-10. I don't know if that's the fight you want to take at that angle. He's only got one plate on. He's going to try to figure this out. He sees the opponent again. Great shots from the LC-10. He's got the perfect ep purple epic one off the ground. And again, let me finish the introductions. Great. Fire away. DJ G -D -G 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 -G. That was that was not bad, not bad. Poppy Rose goes Rossi goes down there. NLW picks him up. Uh, the last couple shots is pa Patrick picks him up. Wait, behind! No, no, not another one comes in from the left. Thundercrotch takes out Patrick as he was getting the knock. The shots were pure on the other opponent, folding in towards NLW, and NLW did knock Big Rig, but. They will all fall down. The team gone. Big Rig, Thundercrotch, Poppy. Rios is who we're looking at. He's got the SPR. They've got Lodi, Lodi weapons now. Sniper rifle shot came in. He, took, he lost a few plates there, but the shots from the team will keep him up. He's got one kill with the SPR. AK-47 Cold War for Big Rig coming out. Looks like his, his main gun, too. You're going to see that different type of scope on there. A lot better now. The adjustments to the Cold War guns and Poppy fires off that SPR shot, gets the headshot in Extreme Gamer, Gamer 1706. Team wipe, see you later. One kill for Big Rig. At the LC10 behind that, one kill for Thundercrotch, Modern Warfare MP5, and a creep. Self reses for Big Rig and Poppy. The UAV online now, they do have a good bit of good deal of cash in between all of them. First circle, 30 seconds away from the, the first loadouts coming out, the free ones, 40 seconds away from closing. Cluster strike in hand for Thundercrush. It looks like he's at the buy station. Let's see what he does here. He could go self res or another UAV. Does get another UAV. Will pop it. Big rig out far wide. AK-74U for Poppy as his backup to that SPR. 
Big Rig's gonna fall, though. One right on top of him. He's ghosted. His whole team, actually. They're rotating in now. And the one with a beautiful introduction of our DJ GG on all the sound effects was Greg, my co-host. The Grim Reaper next to me. Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah, I thought I did pretty good there. You did. You did great. As Poppy and Big Rig. Poppy, we've seen him do this a few times now. He's just standing straight up and down trying to fire off that SPR shots. He doesn't even care how many times he gets hit. Irish takes out Big Rig and the Goosh, too. He's gone. self res comes in from Poppy. Thundercross takes a shot. He's down, and he gets fully down, fully thirsted as well. Poppy, the last one on the team. It has all fallen apart. A couple of UAVs came in, but the... Ghost class of the trio out there was too much. Thundercrotch is going to be in the gouge as Poppy runs away here. Thundercrotch has a minute. Let's go back to Poppy on his on his run. Poppy, though, we've seen it several times now, just standing straight up and down with that SPR. We saw it risky the last time, but he had support from his teammates there with a team of three pushing against a team of two. Probably better to take some cover. He was wide out in the open, standing straight up. Paid the price. Lost all of his place. He only has two on now and lost his teammates. Has the... Modern Warfare AK as his secondary now. Pushing inside. He took that angle perfectly. Look out. He's going for the thirst there. Oh, no. Poppy, Poppy, Poppy. Poppy knocks Frank, but Poppy gets taken out by young Mike. And Poppy, Rios, he really, he had the shots. He had the camera angle there, too. We were just talking about that. We saw the push up the steps. They had no idea. Right outside the field of view. It was perfect timing for him to make that rotation around to the corner. And Thundercrotch hits one Magnum shot. He trades Magnum shot. Man, the third shot will connect. Second kill for Thundercrotch. He keeps the team alive. Yeah, you got to think right there. He played that well, like you were saying, right outside of his field of view when he moved towards the stairs. Gets that easy, quick knock. And he actually was firing great shots. That AK was putting out some massive damage there. But he was too interested in the thirst. I think if he keeps firing the steps, they were all bunched. He could have had a collateral through them. I really think he did have a chance. As Poppy did have to go to the Goosh, too. He does win in the Goosh. Takes down Jet. Poppy on his way back. Looks like they've lost their teammate. He's left them. Said, screw this. We've been seeing this a good amount. and Not that many full teams in these games. It's, it's, it's a fill setting. So Thundercrotch and Poppy still playing together. Not sure if they know each other or not. Their third teammate has abandoned them. Thundercrotch and Poppy land back where the scene of the crime occurred. And they're looking directly at their loadout that is in the middle of the road. It's going to be risky. Poppy died just a mere 20 meters away from where they are. Oh, right out in the open. Oh, no. Thundercrotch is on the loadout. He's going to get crushed, though. Just his leg is sticking out. And he gets hit hard. He's going to go down. M4 and RPG came out. Doesn't matter. Not going to be able to use it. And Poppy's just going to leave him. It's probably the smarter play. Cluster Strike comes in. They walk right past him, but I don't think it's going to matter anyway. Poppy is well on his way. Wait, the shot's coming in. Oh, no. Poppy, not fast enough. Oh, no. <laughs> AJ came around the corner. Skipped on the thirst on Thundercrotch and just beamed Poppy before he could even get around the wall of fire station there. See the team moving into fire now. Hold on. We're not even going to switch to them. Uh, what the hell? Classic COD. We're in the middle of nowhere. Where are we now? Uh, we'll use plan B. Is in the uh, goosh right now. Along with his whole team. No single. And Mercury. All have gone to the goosh. Let's see if we can get a quick flip here. Yep. Mercury is in the goosh now. He has zero kills. He's a stoner in here. Sees the opponent. They both, I think, caught a glimpse of each other here. Flash grenade was off for the opponent. Cooking a frag grenade. Going to try to bounce it in there. That's going to miss. Has the opponent on the car. He's in perfect position there. Merc played that well. He's out of the goosh with the dub. No signal in here now. And plan B watching. Oh, it's no signals watching him. Plan B's in the mix now. Firing shots. He knows where his opponent is. Semtex comes out. Not going to hit. Stun flat. Oh, the stun grenade hits him beautifully. There it is. Yep, plan B will pick him up. Almost got taken out. Whoever the opponent was did a nice job of rotating right before that stun grenade hit. But doesn't matter. No signal now in here. He has the stoner as well. Trying to go three for three. Flash grenade out. Flash grenade will connect. Opponent might be on the back of the car potentially. Oh, right on the wall. Yes, no signal. Shots. Nicely done. That was, that was nice. That was a nice headshot on Mick. There, if he didn't, uh, that was a quick snap. He didn't hit connect on those, he was goner. Indubitably, Greg, also our on field reporter, 
as we watch this trio squad with 47 people left, 20 teams fly into their loadout right outside of, right to the east of Boneyard in that industrial complex over there. They're going to land down. We'll see what they're running here. But Derek, our on-field reporter. Derek, how are we doing today? Oh, hey, Frank. I'm doing just great. Daniel's just driving me around the rover and our hair's blowing in the wind, baby. Derek, always excited, always happy to be out there. We see no signal. Go with the M4 Modern Warfare and AK Modern Warfare. Excuse me. <laughs> that has... No, yeah, it is the it is the it is the AK. Is that DM Ultra on his, M his Modern Warfare guns? Indubitably, Greg. That's what threw me off a little bit there. Uh, I actually didn't know that was possible. Makes me want to grind a little bit more on the DM Ultra. Seriously, man, you got to do it. I think it does look sexy in game. It does indubitably, Greg, look sexy. Is this team, they're going to need plates. That might be why they're heading to the spy station. But wait, a couple plate free plates sitting on the, sitting on over, over here. A couple loadout guns as well. How about this? Cold War MP5 for Plan B, along with a A-Max. I think he's got the DM Ultra on that bad boy. How about that? Is that new? Seriously, can we get somebody let us know? We, Derek, do you know? Oh, uh, no. Thank you, Derek, for that in-depth input. Cold War AK-47 for Merc U. Switching back and forth between two different ones. I'm not sure what he's doing. Maybe this is with their old loadout. This is potentially where they died. One kill for Merc U. I think all teams here, except all everybody on the team has one except for no signal has two. Oh, three kills for Plan B. Take that back. We didn't see his stats as we went in there. I missed it. Let's head for get the your zone. shit together, Frank. Greg, get off my back. Get your shit together. 43 people left. Third circle. Two minutes, 22 seconds away from closing. It's begun. Take a look. Superstore, airport, all going to be in. Rivertown on the other side of the Lemon and Lime River will be in. Factory in the hangars, of course. Somebody on top of pole. The T post scope on the A Max comes out for Plan B. Mounted there, looked to take some shots, but he figured, hey, we're out in the open circle, still closing. Might as well inch up a little bit closer. Cold War MP5 built for pure speed. Look at that bad boy, and he's floating with it too. No stock on there, no grip. Fifty round drum. You got the Tiger spotlight as well with the. Could be the sound suppressor or the, the agency. But either way, he's going to be incredibly fast with that as we saw him moving across that open field. And whoever was on top of pole is also a ninja. Has disappeared. No signal has joined plan B up here. No signal still doesn't have any plates on him. Merc U has four. No signal has zero. There could be some sharing here as Plan B had an extra one as well. We see a loadout drop over right outside. This is at the garage at the gas station, Burger Town over there, right to the the west of Superstore. Take a look here. Right to the west of that, that buy station there is where the loadout is. You can see the red smoke. It's inside the building. They must have dropped it right on the roof there and able to pick it up nice and safely inside. But this team is converging, and they want war. No signal. The only thing here, only two plates. Remember that. That could hurt the team overall. You know, one player drops early in a fight. Could change the whole dynamic, even if you have the the, uh, the ability to surprise them with it. And Merc U immediately falls. He was on the opposite side there. He was pushing in. The team had, had spread out a little bit. Look at that. No signal immediately as well. Immortal takes out. No signal. Bang, bang. Quick, quick. Tap, tap. Merc U, everybody. No signal. Gone. Plan B. Last man standing. Heartbeat sensor comes out. He is now surrounded. Right and left, stun grenade comes in in tight. Oh, it's a decoy, excuse me, in tight on Mercury's body. Mercury gets taken out by Jet. Saw him earlier. Another one outside a gas station. There's the T-Pose AMAX shots. They're going to be brilliant at that range. Oh, my, Plan B smokes him. Fourth kill racked up. He's only got one plate, though, in a rough spot. Shot. Oh, you know what? He's going to get some help. How about this? There's more shots fired in there as the Bertha fired up and drove away. Going to be a little bit of a decoy for plan B to actually maybe escape this situation. Hold on as we see no signal left them. Yeah, we were wondering about that. Remember, he only had two plates on. I was wondering if they were on the same team. We've seen a lot of... Oh, my! Right out in front. Look at that. Amex crack. Drops one. Crack the other 
another one. Plan B has a chance here. He's got to move on this, though. He can't let a plate. He, remember, he's down plates. He steps out and gets absolutely shellacked. From TJ there, unbelievable. I, he must have stepped back to the right. I'm not sure exactly how, how what broke down there. I thought he went in the garage. I must have been mistaken, but that Semtex grenade caused a little bit of smoke, and they couldn't actually... Uh, it looked like plan B looked back through. You couldn't really see where the opponent was there. I think he needed an immediate push. That was his opportunity. He had two down. Spanky Nukes gets back in the game. You know what? The, the You know what? Hard to call. Yep, yep, that's what it was. It looks like this is not the team... That no, that Plan B took out one that must have been that Bertha team, that third party that came in. It was not part of this team. Spanky Nukes was not who he took out. Interesting. Very interesting. Looked like a flank was coming in from that side. I wonder if uh, Merc U got taken out by the third party as well, uh, just with three teams in the area and not knowing. TJ with an LC10 has his iPad, two thermites, eight plates, gas mask, and a self-res online. The team together doesn't have too much cash on them, but no big deal right now. They almost all have self-res except for Spanky Nukes, who was just bought back. Two kills for TJ, five kills for Spanky. He's got a striker. Interesting. Like to see the difference. There we go. Yeah, I love it. Totally. Dead. When is the last time you saw a striker out there, Frank? Couldn't even tell you, buddy. Couldn't even tell you. I love it, though. And it seems to be working for him. He's got five. Eight plates, no gas mask, heartbeat sensor, and a Semtex form ammo crate in hand as well. Up on the roof, Immortal rocking the Krieg in the far with a precision airstrike, has a dead silence, a heartbeat sensor, and a Semtex. Another a, another team rocking three heartbeat sensors. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not in love with that play. I really not. I think yeah, using some tacticals is, is at least one player on the team. Preferably a my choice too, but you need somebody that's going to be a good comms. If you're really, really getting after it, you need somebody that's going to be great on comms, running that heartbeat sensor that's able and ready to call out positions off that heartbeat sensor and knows how to use it properly. That's very true, Greg. You got to think about it that way, too. If you're going to run, if you're going to have a team and you're really thinking about, you know, putting up some dubs, putting up some maximizing kills, if you're all going to stick together, really, if you're looking for dubs, you need to have a, a few different type of players on the team. You know, maybe a, if you're running a trios team, maybe one sniper, maybe two. You know, you can run different formats here for sure. You know, have an entry, you know, you, what you would call an entry frag or somebody ready to rock and roll, follow up those drops from the sniper rifle. But at the same time, running three heartbeat sensor kind of limits you. You know, stun grenades or flash grenades. Marking or even snap grenades, something yeah, like that, just to give you a little bit more advantage on an opponent who you're pushing into. Uh, you know, three people rock running the same way, coming into the building, giving callouts on an iPad is just going to clutter the comms at the same time. You know, if the, even if they are staying quiet, they are all pushing, looking at the same information. So I agree with you, Greg. I like to see you know it, it definitely a little switch up when you get into the team games. I believe the heartbeat sensor definitely overpowered, but so are stun grenades. As we see here, Immortal's going to get aggressive. He's pushing in. Dead Silence comes out from him. Again, watch this. No stun grenades, and the heartbeat sensor wasn't picking anything up. They're up on the roof here. He's going to come in behind at least two. Shots. Oh, my God. They're lining up right in a row for him. He drops one, drops two. Immortal down. Oh, no. He's going to reload off a lot of Oh, he does it. He's going to drop all three. self has got off on one. Yes, doesn't matter. Immortal with the... Just absolutely shitting on them with that thing. Unbelievable. Stepped inside there. You can see the side scroller, that blueprint, just lighting up fireworks right now. The rainbow's out as TJ did drop during that fight, but the seventh kill now for Immortal. Feeling good. They have just under enough money to buy him back here. 3,400. Quick mess in hand right now. Need a little bit more cash to get their teammate back as we look at the fifth circle. This game is moving quickly now as Spanky Nukes shoots and takes out Hash Brown down on the second floor out that window there. I think that's his sixth kill now too as well. Let's take a look at the circles just closing on hangers. One and two. Ground War Building, Police Station. Peach and Green and Hangar 3 will still be in and along with the trailers, but that's it. Just looking at hangers here. Shots off on the other side here back by the Green Building and that Bertha. That might be the same Bertha as before from over at Gas Station. I think it is actually. Got the Grawl for Spanky Moving. Nukes, too, as his primary. The pink Grawl, you know, like that. Lost. Looking good. Looking at this building. You did see somebody in there. The pings come through to explain to the team. Is Immortal still up on the roof here with that creek? Precision airstrike in hand. I don't, th I don't think they're going to be able to get him back, Greg. No, there's no way. The one they don't have the cash for, it too. There's really no buy stations left after this. I mean, take a look here. 
They're all gonna be out. That's it. Yep, TJ is just gonna have to look from afar here and root on his team, trying to do his best with some callouts. Spanking nukes is on second floor. Immortal up on the third floor, up on the roof here. Firing some shots back and forth. Semtex was brilliant from him there. Remember, they do have an ammo box. He can let these fly. He got a crack with it. Oh, look out! Semtex comes in high on Immortal! What a throw! Somebody just chucked that up top just like that! 12 people left in the game, and Immortal loses two plates off of it. What a stick with the grenade there. Yeah, it was quite a toss. Who the hell is that? Randy Johnson down there? <laughs> Randy Johnson. What a what a what a name. Oh my. W F U. Immortal said F U right back, brother. Threw us a Semtex. Lights him up. Look, he's just standing on more Semtex too. He just keeps refilling them. They haven't even used that ammo box yet. Semtex was brilliant though on the Ryan Shield. He's able to take him out. That would have been huge too. The Ryan Shield would look like it might have been pushing into the building since of course that building on the right is going to be closed out as the six circle will touch here in a moment. Just looking at hangers one, two, fire station and ground war building. All that's left, the building they're in right now. Just a tip of police station as well. Somebody could be lurking over in that area with Top Ten Sitch! It's now top ten! Five teams left, ten people. A lot of a lot of not full teams out there. Shots outside, Spanky drops one, picks them up. Eight kills for Immortal. Precision airstrike trying to line up. Spanking nukes also has eight. Sixteen between the two. TJ watching, still rooting them on. There's nine people left in the game now. Yeah, that ride shield got in there, Greg. It would have been a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. That was a big kill. Look out, shots to the left. Somebody was lurking in the first floor. Spanky Nukes, though, is going to cover his teammate, Selfres. Watching the window. Out he comes. There's the striker. Oh, no. Maybe that's why we haven't seen too much of the striker. The shots weren't the greatest, but they were connecting. It just felt like he should have had a crack a little bit earlier, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, keep a watch. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying the striker's bad just yet. Let's keep a watch, though. I've seen some good things out of this gun. It's more of a long-range SMG, so three teams now, seven people. You got to figure two with five. You're looking at potentially a 3v2, v2 situation. Shots fire on the opposite side. This is the, team, the time for this team to move in. As one falls, three teams of six now. They're controlling a decent... Oh, wait. There we go. There's a Was that a glint up top there? Yeah, he's going to ping that. Let Immortal know Spanking Nukes does as the circle shifts brilliantly for them. Spanking Nukes does have almost nearly a full gas mask as well. The circle is perfect for Spanky. Immortal might need to make a rotation. You know what? Immortal's just going to wait. Let's keep an eye on Immortal here. He has nine kills, and he's just going to wait for these teams to pour out. One pours out across the front, but there was one deeper. But Spanky decided to do the same. He's not folding the circle just yet. His Immortal's closing in on his position. He had knocked one, and Immortal now takes out another. Shots came out across the middle. They've got to rotate in the zone. You hear some coughs in behind Immortal, though. He's got to be careful. There's one on his back left. The thirst comes in on Chupsky. The crack and the fall from Spanky, though, on the opposite side. Somebody's dancing around that plane. Immortal's going to hop inside. He's going to waste his gas mask. There's the shots from the back. Lynx comes in from behind. There's... It's a 2v1 now. It all's uh, all turned, but Immortal's going to fall. Ragnar takes out Immortal. Lynx takes out Spanky. They split there. One went one way, one went the other. Lynx came through Hangar 2. It came in behind. Immortal stepping out that door would have died. His only option was to go deeper into gas and try to come around the other side. But Ragnar was just waiting. Ragnar Lothrock takes him down. The Viking himself. Look at him go. <laughs> GG's to the trios game. Crazy finish next to Hangers. Oh, wow. I, it, they had perfect positioning. You think maybe they should have fell back a little bit. But I like the aggressive play to try to hold. They just couldn't hold up completely as they pushed out at all different angles. Yeah, that team did a brilliant job to push center, left, and mid. Center, Does right, left, and me? mid. Excuse me. Takes another shot, just misses. Look at this, Fred. Go, oh boy. It's insane. Oh, oh, no. That'll wrap that one up. That's a trios game for Fredansky. Brand new, live, exclusive. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and that, that end game always kind of shows you exactly how uh, it kind of into the mind of that tactical approach. Obviously, it's tactical uh, for different in different ways on a solo so in, you know, in, in each game mode. But when you look at a trios or a quads, especially when you're down a man, you're looking at um, 
you know, in that case, it ended up being a three v two. I think the last competitor fell right on the edge, of, right in the hangar to one of the uh, the other players. But you saw that setup from the two where they're down a man. It was a very aggressive positioning. One uh, on the back end, holding almost circle line, waiting for them to push in. Another one out in front, waiting from the walk across. You love that play, but when you do that. You got to be calling targets. You got to be laying them out. And if you're not knocking or not laying them down, I think you got to move quickly to regain positioning and play that tactical approach, especially when you look at, you know, you got to do a little bit of math there and say, hey, they cleared out all of airstrip. It is wide open in the middle of hangars in the airfield out there. There's one plane to go to. That's it. So there's, I mean, there is no cover. So you're, you're looking at a position. If we don't take these, take these guys out now and win on this point, we probably lose. And that team, you got to give them credit. I mean, one, you give credit to the, to the duo that was left out of the trios team there. Um, they, they, I love that aggressive play, but they were countered from that threesome perfectly. They, they came straight down the middle. One went left into the other hangar. One went into hangar two. One went into hangar one. One came straight out right up the gut. And you saw the one whoever went up the gut gets taken out and thirsted. But as, as that's going on and both opponents were shooting that way, that rotation into hangar pushes, pushes our, you know, our, our, the first person we're spectating back towards the second player on that team holding back. And then you see the rotation from the right make them both kind of tighten up and then that push from the left that was still coming through comes around the back cleans up the first knock and then the last opponent just now in a 2v1 situation totally caught out in gas is bit has been out rotated from flanks on both sides so pretty interesting finish but you like the tactical presence that's that's you don't you know necessarily always get to see it that in depth in call of duty you know coming from a PUBG background you're looking at tactical approaches cons- consistently um and and not that caught is it just pub was much more tactical, especially at end game on how you want to approach. Did you want to split? Did you want to stay together? And right there with a with a cod finish, even though it was pretty quick, once you break it down and look at it, very tactical approach from both teams. Yeah, and and you can see how the counter play of you know played off of that original play, and it just it was cool to see the breakdown of that in that fight fully come to fruition at the end of that, and the win get picked up by the Viking. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe for more content coming your way. Until next time, bye!